Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And welcome to another sub, 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 whatever sub segment of <laughs> fictional women around the world. Whee! I will say I'm in a bit of a pickle. I'm in a bit of a pickle, Samantha. Um, oh. Because I really wanted to do, and I continue to want to do, a few Last of Us characters because the show is coming out in January. And I'm hyped for the show and I want to talk about them. But now it's like in a strange spoilery zone because the game has been out since 2013. But everybody I thought of, I'm like, that's a pretty big spoiler if somebody has somehow managed to avoid getting spoiled from listening to the show. <laughs> right. To be fair, outside of listening to the show, obviously, mm-hmm. but with the show coming on HBO, had it not been for you, I would not know anything about the show. I know. But if I talked about the people I was going to talk about, it would have been a major spoiler. There was four yes. people I thought of. Four. And all of them, I was like, oh, no, I can't. Oh, no. <laughs> well, we've definitely done spoiler days yeah. before. So I think as long as you do the spoiler alert at the top, you'll yeah. be okay. I think we should. I think you should think about it. You don't have to be in that pickle anymore. <laughs> You're trying to get me out of this pickle. I was. I'm, I'm you should have pickle. seen me deliberate. I, I know it wouldn't surprise you, but I was like, just couldn't. No, it doesn't. You <laughs> deliberating on things does not surprise me. Annie. <laughs> no. Well, and the, the interesting thing is, I actually had another character I was going to talk about today, who I really cannot wait to talk about. It is from a cartoon series. I'll give you a little hint. Oh, I have no idea. I know. Well, you could look at the calendar, but don't, don't. Okay. Let it be a surprise. Oh, no, no, no uh, but I bumped it because the internet is on fire with on this fictional fire. character. <laughs> because today we are talking about Wednesday Adams, the deadpan goth character who has, yeah, just taken over the internet. And that's saying something that I know about it because I'm not on TikTok. But uh, things have come my way. And, uh... I mean, <laughs> I did watch the show, so I'm excited. Mm-hmm. But because I am from the original era of Christina oh, Ricci, not yes. original, I guess the secondary era of uh-huh. Christina Ricci playing the character, had there been social media like that, I think she would have really owned it. Because she kind of owned our generation uh, between Ooh. this character, uh, Casper, and mm-hmm. um, now and then, those movies, she, I think, would have been, could have been a little more iconic. I mean, to the fact that she was in this new edition because she, she was that was. iconic. Yes. Well, I hope you'll talk about that when we get to it because I've actually never seen it. <laughs> uh, any of those things. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, I Spoilers, but very light spoilers, I'll say. Um, for the show. I haven't really had a lot of experience with the Adams Family. I vaguely remember watching some of the very old show when I was a kid because my dad liked it. Um, and the song, the theme song, was on the Halloween playlist every year. But mm-hmm. that's about, that was my, the extent of my knowledge. I did watch Netflix's Wednesday, which broke the platform's record for most hours streamed. Um, I did always like the character, though, even though I hadn't, like, seen a lot of the material she was in. I always liked her. I liked the look of her. I liked the general vibe of her. I think I I wanted to dress as her. I have a Wednesday outfit up here. I never did it, but I have the outfit that's ready to go. <laughs> that that iconic dress, which mm-hmm. has always been a part of the character since the beginning. Um, that's still a big fashion trend. And it was even before this release has been, like I remember looking for something for like li- nice black dresses and that dress would pop up. And I'm like, why, why would I as an adult thing want to go to a wedding wearing that? Cute though. <laughs> But no. That would be awesome. People, you <laughs> get people talking. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, so uh, here's a quote about the numbers. Tim Burton's Adam's Family reboot series has become only the third Netflix show to rack up a billion hours of views a month. And I believe it's gone up since then. The dance, the Wednesday dance, which has a lot of issues and back and forth around it. But it is everywhere. Tim Burton, who directed a bunch of the episodes, is problematic, but we are not talking about that today. That's a different thing. Um, And yeah, we're not really going to go in depth on plot stuff. We're more just talking about the character. So yeah, 
Minor spoilers, but not nothing major. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I was born on a Wednesday, and uh, the the poem "Wednesday's Child is Full of Woe." I loved that poem when I was a kid because I really <laughs> wanted to be emo, even young. I was like, ah, oh, yes, oh, yeah, the tragedy of being born on a Wednesday. And there's this series called "The Keys to the Kingdom" series, which I loved when I was a kid, and it had all of these kind of like. Every character, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it w- represented like a one of the seven sins. Uh, and Wednesday was one of my favorites. Okay, so uh, let's talk about this character. So Wednesday, Friday, Adams is one of the main characters of the Adams Family franchise. Um, is depicted in the comics that first debuted in 1938 in the New Yorker, um, in TV shows, films, and a musical. If you don't know, at the core, the Adams family is sort of a wacky, creepy, outcast family of gothy kind of monster-adjacent folks. Um, They're sort of like the Halloween version of something like the Brady's. So Wednesday's parents are Morticia and Gomez Adams, and she is the older sister to Pugsley and Pubert Adams, though the ages and order has changed a lot. Um, And yeah, she was named after the nursery rhyme line, Wednesday's child is full of woe. Over the years, she has been played by several people from Lisa Loring, Christina Valenzuela, Nicole Figuere, Chloe Grace Moretz, uh, Christina Ricci, and now Gina Ortega. She's usually depicted as having pale skin, dark hair, and braided pigtails, black clothes, and just a general gothy look. Although that's not always true, but kind of generally. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, And this has also sparked conversation about Latina representation, because generally, but not always, Gomez has been played by a Latino actor, but it was never really a big piece of his identity. Um, And while people were excited for Ortega on the new show, the same is true for her character. Um, And her very sympathetic ancestor, Goody, in the show is a white settler with blonde hair, and many argue uh, should have been a Mesoamerican or indigenous person instead. And on top of that, a lot of the bullies, who admittedly were redeemed, but still were the few black characters in the show. All right, so including owning a pilgrim world, which was like yes. Depending on the creators and actors, the character has changed in its depiction, but a few things generally remain the same. For instance, when she was first introduced in the 1960s show as a six-year-old girl, people argue about her age all the time, uh, she was fascinated with the macabre, uh, and that's been a constant theme of her character. However, some iterations of her have been sweeter than what most of us probably would expect. Uh, Definitely in the context of the rest of her family, she was the, quote, nice one in these early versions. In the 90s movie series, though, she was meaner, uh, and you'll have to talk about this, Samantha. She also typically has a strong protective streak with her family, though she might try to hide or deny it. However, there are plenty of instances where she really, really punishes people who disrespect her family. In the 2019 movie, she's nice to those who don't bother her, but not so much to those who do. Um, And she usually has some kind of scientist or sleuth angle going on. Right. She's always either doing an experiment or she's always on a case of something. Mm -hmm. Um, And the ones that I do remember is she does love punishing her brother slash Mm -hmm. playing, quote unquote, with her brother, but it's typically like trying to dismember him or trying to electrocute him or trying to explode him. Um, (laughs) And he loves it. Pugsley just loves it. Mm -hmm. Um, However, yeah, but if you try to mess with her, try to tease her, she's going to come at you. The two differences with Ricci and Ortega, the Ortega character is a lot more, I feel like she would be actually on the spectrum Mm -hmm. character of like being so hyper-focused and so like, over the top, like unable to exude emotions, as where Richie's character just didn't want to. It was kind of uh-huh. like one of those. One felt like a choice. One felt like an, a, a diagnosis. <laughs> if you can, if you can go there. <laughs> right, right. That's a quote. Um, that's a quote of the episode. <laughs> well, do you remember? Like, when did you see the '90s movie? Oh, I was uh, definitely younger. It was definitely during the times of. It was after. I want to say Casper, which we all loved everything because Devin Sawa. We loved Devin Sawa, uh, and then like f- fell in love with a ghost. Apparently, I was pretty young. I was eleven, and Christina Ricci would have been eleven as well. I think we were the same age. 
And by the way, I do love the resurgence of Christina Ricci coming back full swing into the acting world because she's always been great to me. Um, So the three films that I know her best are The Addams Family, Casper, and Now and Then. So for me, uh, I think Now and Then was the big one because that was specifically made for, I think, young girls. Mm -hmm. But then like, yeah, she was Addams Family first. Mm -hmm. And then the other two. But what I do remember is like, even though you had big names like Angelica Houston, Christopher Lloyd, as in fact, one of the movies were uh, based on Christopher Lloyd coming back to the family. Mm -hmm. Christina Ricci always, always pulled focus, whether it was, uh, she was the one, I think, investigating Christopher Lloyd, actually, his Mm -hmm. character who plays um, Uncle Fester, who loses his memory and comes back to the family. So it was like she was the focus for all the movies, even though other big name characters were on it as well. And she was fairly new for that. So that's what I do remember. And her characters were always like pointed, like it was dark and mysterious, but it was her character. Those big eyes, it worked for her. Yeah. Yeah. And I would agree. Like, again, I haven't seen it, but what I felt like when I think of those movies, all the images I remember, all the like random quotes I've heard people say are from Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and uh, I I had to resist just reading a bunch of quotes because that character, it just bangs them out. Like, yes, <laughs> yes. So she many is lines. a witty one-liner, like stings and walks away. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. yes, it is. And that's kind of the thing why people love this character so much because she has been the source of a lot of feminist articles. Um, and so many people over the years have cosplayed her. I, The second I saw this new show, I was like, oh, yeah, next year at Dragon Con, <laughs> this is it. This is going to be yeah. huge. All of them, yes. Yeah. And it, I mean, there's like iconic looks. I get it. Um, And I do think one of the reasons she really resonated with a lot of people and a lot of women and girls is that she is the opposite of how young girls are typically portrayed in our media, Uh, which we've talked about a lot in this show. Like, there are so many juxtapositions with her because pigtails, for instance, are usually associated with innocent young girls. Um, But she does not behave that way. She doesn't behave how you expect. She leans into the strange. She is, quote, not emotional, which we'll return to in a minute. But um, she's just kind of like the opposite of what we're used to seeing in much of our media when it comes to that type of character. Um, From Black Girl Nerds, specifically about the 90s version of this character, quote, she's not nice, she's not sweet, and she's not sorry. Wednesday Adams is blunt, cynical, sarcastic, and has the most enviable resting bitch face, none of which she has any intention of apologizing for. That's right, when unsuspecting people dole out the usual garbage of, you should smile more, Wednesday asserts herself firmly and defiantly refuses to smile on command. A brilliant example for every young girl told to make herself look friendly and approachable because, God forbid, women appear the least least bit intimidating. Although she is white, cis, presumably straight female, she doesn't use her privilege as an excuse, but rather as a tool to amplify the voices of those who find it much harder to be heard. And then, this is from Bitch Flicks. What does it mean to be a little girl? There's so much cultural baggage associated with female childhood. On the one hand, little girls are pure and innocent and needing of protection. They're the emotional backdrop of a thousand action movies. (laughs) The father must get home and save his darling little girl. On the other hand, little girls are threatening. They're creepy. They're the demons of a thousand horror movies. The family union must save itself from the imprecations of a terrifying little girl who wants to destroy them. And then there's Wednesday Addams. She's another thing entirely. And Wednesday is still really, really threatening. That's right, threatening. Part of why I loved these movies so much as a kid was because Wednesday, far from being a delicate flower or even playing second fiddle to her brother, is arguably the most dangerous character in the whole story. She has a sense of apathy and morbid misery mixed in with a violent streak and superhuman strength. She's very threatening, especially to everyone she views as well, a threat. I would say that if she fears anything, it's becoming normal. And that's a powerful message. The idea that the biggest thing we have to fear is not abnormality, but the loss of what makes us distinct, it's especially poignant coming from Wednesday because what makes her distinct is so, well, distinctive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And as we said, she's she's very, very antisocial and she has so many great dark dark uh, one-liners. And it's kind of comical and entertaining to see a young girl reject so much of societal norms, to talk about these huge literary figures, to quote them. Like, it's it was funny to see the juxtaposition of her and her 
roommate who a lot of people shit, by the way, in the new show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Apparently Ortega does it too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if she's just like feeding into the frenzy, but uh, it may yeah. have been. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things I think is interesting because in, in what I remember about the 1991 movies, and someone can correct me, but there is a really problematic scene, 1991, in which they are playing um, Native Americans and cowboys, mm-hmm. essentially. But when they make this comment about how the pilgrims slaughtered essentially all of the Native Americans and it is their fault that they brought in disease and like they tricked the man. Like she says this and everybody's like, oh my God, you know, like making right. a comedic scene mm-hmm. as well as the fact that in the new Wednesday, they talk about the problematic issues with chocolate and how they use enslaved peoples and the Germans used enslaved peoples to gather all this chocolate and massacre a whole <laughs> community for mm-hmm. chocolate. And I found that funny because like these are the things that we know Wednesday right. does. She's going to take what white people, and essentially it is, white people would want as a celebration Mm -hmm. to be decimated with the truth, (laughs) the the level Mm -hmm. of racial problematic issues with that subject that people, the white people were trying to celebrate. So I did appreciate those things. That was a couple of the scenes that like poked out of my mind when it comes to the fact that she was making sure you knew the truth, whether you liked it or not. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of one of the things that I think is really interesting about this character and why I think so many people like her is she doesn't, so many of us, for reasons we've talked about, for reasons I totally understand and I've done, like you you do a thing for safety. Like you're like, oh, I don't want to speak up because it's not safe for me to do so. It's fun to watch a character be like, no. And she's <laughs> dangerous. Like they said, like you don't mess with her. So it's really like rewarding to kind of get to live that moment of, oh, I wish I could do that. Like, oh, yeah, right. like really live it. And then I do love so many things aimed at teenage girls. And I think this is changing and it has been changing for a while, but for so long was just like f- so focused on the romance part and so focused on like the things she'd be writing in her diary is, oh, why won't this guy notice me? That's like the last thing on her mind. It's mm-hmm. not that she's like, if something comes her way, she's not kind of interested but that's just not her thing. Like, so the, like right. that's the bat on the back burner. She's got all these other things. She's right. About. And that definitely 1991 Wednesday mm-hmm. didn't care about boys. Boys right. was not a thing. Right. And I, I appreciate that. I appreciate. I liked seeing the comparison of her, like her and the roommate, where the roommate's like, "I have my blog and I'm writing about this and this and this." And Wednesday's just like, <laughs> <laughs> "Let me typewriter this thing." <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, here is a quote from The Guardian. Especially for a teenager with a kid-friendly rating, Wednesday speaks with the critical self-awareness and acumen of your textbook Byronic hero, a literary architect commonly associated with Heathcliff of Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights, or more recently, Gossip Girl's Chuck Bass and even Sylvie. They're your clever, morose, condescending types, dangerously blessed with irresistible good looks and saddled with the baggage of past trauma. Wednesday's trauma is the death of her pet scorpion, who was murdered when she was six. She's since vowed to never cry again. That was hard. That was mean. It was mean. I did. I want to come back and talk about this because I a lot of articles have come out about, because of the popularity of the show, about why we love <laughs> women who hate us. Um, so I do want to come back and talk about Oh, that. Lord. <laughs> no, I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be funny. Um, I would argue in the new show she is somewhat of what a mainstream media person would call a Mary Sue. I have a whole lot of thoughts about this. Uh, And you can listen to our past episode about that, but like good at everything other than human interaction. uh, And everyone loves her. But again, I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily. And dudes get away with that scot-free without a sexist moniker uh, being attached to them. So just to put that out there, she also has like psychic powers, which I think has gone off and on throughout her her run. Uh, She can play the cello, can speak multiple languages, can fence. She's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, and is an archer in all of the movies. Is an archer, yeah, you're right. Uh, mm-hmm. One thing that they didn't really resolve in this season of the show, I haven't seen any of the other things, and I saw some people kind of complain about this, but there was a, a tense mother daughter relationship in the show where uh, Wednesday did not want to be like her mother, kind of felt pressure to be like her, very much like a teenage pushing away, don't want to do it. I'm, um, I've heard that that's that was kind of a departure. Yeah, that's never a thing. The mother never. Right really cares. And the daughter never Mm. really cares for her mother's approval. Actually, everything she did, she got her mother's approval, essentially. Um, Mm -hmm. And and it's true, the Wednesday one, uh, she, everything she did, mother was proud because it was all that dark and morose type of conversation. And they're very proud of that. Mm -hmm. Um, The only thing that the mother, uh, Catherine, 
Zeta Jones, which was, I did not realize she was going to play this until I watched it, mm -hmm. um, is that she wants her daughter's affections. Yeah, that's not a thing. Right. In the, in the other movies. Okay. It kind of separates the two of them, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So we could come back and maybe talk about that uh, later. I do also think this is an interesting, uh, in that activists around the world where you unfortunately could not be there where I read listener mail, Samantha. <laughs> I did. I mentioned a quote about, I'd, I'd seen from a, a famous author who was saying, like, essentially, once you start to break apart characters for that are intended for children audiences, um, as an adult, everything falls apart. And I do think this was a really interesting example of where Wednesday's like, well, I've been, somebody's tried to kill me and uh, I've, I've been like all this stuff and this stuff. And they're like, oh, great, it's going well. Like it was a, it was a fun flip on that sort of, <laughs> that whole idea. And then going back to something you said earlier, there has been discussion about how Wednesday's antisocial behaviors could be coded as autism or something on the spectrum. Um, here's another quote from The Guardian. Only when a conventionally beautiful, non-weird person performs weirdness is this palatable to, quote, normal people, according to one commenter, the parent of an autistic child. Actually, quote, weird people get bullied, sidelined, or placed outside of the zone of real friendships. And I, I agree. I think this is one of the reasons the character hits with so many people who feel like outcast in one way or another, but realistically, it wouldn't play out like this like, if right. you're picking it apart like, as an adult. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, into this series specifically, the very beginning scene, which she's expelled from a regular school, mm -hmm. they were the outcast there. She gets expelled, which that's mm -hmm. why her brother gets bullied constantly. She comes to a school for wayward people, like people with powers. So that behavior is not so off-putting in mm -hmm. a school like that. Right. I think someone with a spectrum that has that type, if she was on the spectrum, as I was saying, I'm like, if I was watching this clinically, I would think that she was on the spectrum with high functioning, all of these things, mm -hmm. and more OCD than anything else. Because her mm -hmm. hyper focus is uh, very obvious mm -hmm. to the point that she does not care who she runs over, which was part of the conversation. Um, in that, she's in an environment where she success, she's successful because she can do all of these things really, really well in a school that is an outsider. So, right. would she have been so outsided? I don't know. Right. That's a good point. That's a good point. And I, I another thing is like she's she's a really fun character, but she is pretty toxic. Like again, we're, we're like putting in our real world <laughs> things where it doesn't necessarily <laughs> need to be, but she's definitely a friend I would drop. I would drop her. <laughs> um, <laughs> but very fun to watch. Um Christina Ricci said of her, Wednesday was allowed to be just who she was. She's never asked to change or compromise or hide who she is. Uh, and actually, there's, there was a whole uh, piece CNN just released yesterday about why in the world did this dance take off so much. And that was one of their big points was like, it's because she essentially was, she was doing the dance like nobody's watching, but did not care at all. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. was being herself. <laughs> Absolutely. And also, retro is coming back in. That was like a retro uh, yeah. interpretive dance. It was. It was. It was very unpredictable. That's what I would say. From Slate, here's a quote. Sure, there are problems with this. For one, it assumes that stoicism, a more stereotypically masculine trait, is preferred. The feminine position on, on the emotional gender binary leans toward expressiveness and melodrama. And the cliche that women can't control their emotions is, is often weaponized against them. How many times have women been deemed too emotional to do something like run a country? Mass swooning over deadpan women implies that expressive, vivacious women are somehow not in control. Quite the opposite. There's bravery and merit in being as passionate or loud as you want to be, knowing it could be spit back at you in some silly gender debate. It means someone has the guts to let you know them. And then, one final quote from The Guardian. The enduring appeal of characters like this, an admittedly toxic outcast with inherently good intentions, is the desire for every weirdo to feel seen on TV. Wednesday's formula may be flawed, but fantasy is the point. In an idealized world where your well-timed barbs and lack of interest in others' approval made you impervious to bullies and the caretaker of your fellow misfits, who wouldn't want to be Wednesday Adams? Yes. That's what we were kind of talking about. Like, yeah, in this fantasy world, it'd be great if you just say what you want. Protect the misfits. Fantastic. And can shoot a bow and arrow. Yes, and can shoot a bow and arrow. Can fence. 
flipping. And <laughs> she lost, though. I did like she that. Did. Liked she that did. Turn. I liked that, too. That was unpredicted. That was not what I expected. Yeah, I liked that, too. But also, yeah, I, I like... I, I, like I said, I want to come back and revisit this deadpan woman thing because I don't think it's wrong. I think it's really fun to see a character like this who is stoic and all of those things. But there is, we can't ignore that, yeah, that's typically more of a masculine thing. and Right. All of this things. seems like it's a uh, male gaze. And I like speaking of that, I definitely saw a TikTok. And when men write women being strong, yeah. it's literally like stoic, deadpan, and being angry, and, mm-hmm. but like seething, but fighting type of. And if you're feminine, that's not a heroine. Right. Yeah. So we'll have to come back and talk about that. I do think that these characters are wonderful. And I think that should be a, a fine thing to do, but we can't. Yeah, there's so much other stuff. <laughs> so much other stuff right. in the background. But yeah, this was a really fun one to research. And I honestly, this is a longer one of, of these episodes and I narrowed it down. Like a lot of yeah, people have written a lot of things, things about this. So maybe we'll come back and one day uh, revisit it. Uh, there's there's so much out there if you want to read more about her. Um, but she's, yeah, she was a fun character to research. I liked it. <laughs> in the meantime... I do got a lot of characters coming up, but if you've got one that's burning in the back of your brain, listeners, please let us know. You can email us at Stephanie and MomStuff at iHeartMedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at MomStuff Podcast or on Instagram at Stuff One Never Told You. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina. Another incredible woman. Yes, indeed. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff One Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. <laughs> 